Uh, my name is Greg Dale. I am call the, to order the regular session, and we need a roll call. Uh, Commissioner Newman. Here. Commissioner Coleman. I'm here. Commissioner Higgins. Wouldn't miss it. Commissioner Benson. And President Dale. Here. Jeff, would you lead us in the pledge? Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic which stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Ryan, you want to report on closed session? Yeah, no, no reportable action was taken during tonight's closed session. All right, item seven, public comment. At this point in the uh, the meeting, we would take comment on items not on the agenda. If you're here to speak on items not agendized here, please approach the microphone, tell us who you are, and uh, you have three minutes to give us your comments. Kevin Pinto, um, we have Gentle East Seafoods down at Woodley Island, and this is our 20th year. Um, yeah, we paid some prices on permits and this and that over the years, and the harbor's actually been very good to us, but I think we're probably paying, pardon me? This harbor? Yeah. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I mean, we have special permits for some signs we have and everything. The main thing I'm here tonight about is parking at A. B and C dock has virtually zero parking. Um, we have a lot of out of town boats and every year it's it's one or another, but a lot of these boats have three and four cars per boat. And these are young studs that could by far park down here and walk to the boat when they go. Some of them are liverboards down there, so their cars are there all the time. And it's 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 like for our business and in, in my uh aspect is there's no parking so people come down there if they don't find parking i don't know if they go somewhere else and find it and walk down it's it's a big burden on them it's not so much on me personally because i'm willing to do the walk but i'd like the harbor district to consider a two permit about parking for those lots because there's fishermen that you know, Sea Dog doesn't have any parking. It has a row of parking uh, along the work dock. I mean, those guys all have to hoof it anyways. But I'd like it to consider something like that. It's got to be something with some teeth, though, because fishermen are notorious for working their ways around everything. Um, that's, a, that's a big ticket item. It's always been a, a, a sore spot for me um, personally, um, just because of our customers don't have a place to park. Um, I know you're not going to be able to do that. You have a, a kind of let us use the unloading zone there. And that was pretty much okayed by the Harbor District. People come in, they park there, come down, get some crabs and go. So it's not it's not that bad, but some of these rigs are like friggin dump trucks down there. These guys have and they're parking at the edges of the of the unloading zone. It's actually hard to get in and out when you got to swing all the way out and you have a middle row of cars. There was one local parked in a um, handicap zone, and I I sort of took that to heart. And I didn't actually know it was a local, but the district I think figured it out. And I before I left that morning, I saw his wife come down and move his truck. I didn't know whose it was, but I didn't think that was cool at all. I mean, handicap zones are for handicapped people. Um, that that's a big one. Um, we we have we pay dock insurance liability. Um, I know that a lot of fishermen that sell off the boat don't have to do that. They have other things I think they pay the harbor, but I'm not sure that they're, you know, forking out as much as we do. That's a, a bit of contention for me, but I know ours is a permanent spot. And so I sort of, you know, bypass thinking about that too much. But it's a, it's, it all is costs I have to incur that other people don't. But the parking's a, a huge one. If, if we could work on that. I would really appreciate it. Thanks, so. Kevin. Okay, thank you. Anybody else care to comment on items not on the agenda? Chris, you're talking? No? All right, seeing none, we will move to consent calendar. 
Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Um, Larry, number nine, communications. Um, wanted to, the first item is the accept the donation of the fisherman statue painting from uh, Brian Bishop. And so um, in the, included in the, in the packet, uh, Brian is, or I'm assuming you're Brian, is that we're hoping to have if that we could uh, get you to go up by the painting and have the uh, the board president and so that we could accept the, the statue and then uh, if uh, if you could take a, a picture uh, of this that would be that would be great and so and perhaps if you could tell us a little bit about uh, the painting and, uh, and when you when you did it and just what was the inspiration? Oh, just the two of us. Yeah, that's yep. what Larry just said. Oh, I heard him right. That's gorgeous. <laughs> it's beautiful, man. It's beautiful. You really captured the light. Let's do let's do one more with all the commissioners up there. Okay, everybody. We got everybody up here. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. You want on this side, Stephen? I'll come over there. There we go. Uh, yes. All right. I think about it. That was the Jeff's idea. picture, and he stopped by to have a beer in my garage where I paid that. And he says, I know a good place for that thing. Yeah, maybe you could go on the microphone and uh, tell us a little bit about the painting. Yes, yeah, please tell them about the painting. <laughs> I tried to get a hold of the fellow that made the thing, and I, I saw what the I read the plaque down there, and I, I've done some other paintings around Humboldt County. I did one of the the fire wagon Eureka's got that steam wagon. It's the oldest one in the state of California. Horse drawn. I didn't know we had one here, and I was born and raised here. And um, I saw that statue, and I just uh, I, I took a lot of what do you call it artistic do what you want kind of stuff on it but uh the um i thought that that statue what it stands for down there it's 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 outstanding those ladies that went together and did that and it's uh um it's acrylic and um i don't know i just saw that thing and i thought hey it, it, I, the the fellow that did it did an outstanding job on it there's no way you could match what he did and i did some some part of the statue was broken and busted up down there and on the finger on the on the left hand is is, is broken and, and it's um but i didn't think it was outstanding it was just a, it wasn't so much that i painted it it was the statue that guy did that i mean that uh, i've been painting for a long time i couldn't make a statue like that guy did but uh no i'm, I'm glad you guys appreciate that and it was a fun paint thank you thanks brian We will hang that proudly. All right. Any other, any other correspondence? Any correspondence? I, I wanted to let the board know that uh, I, I believe you received uh, a letter from the ILWU Labor Union where they uh, commented on uh, basically our uh, new heavy lift marine terminal and the project labor agreement. Mainly wanted to make sure that we. Uh, uh, understand that the ILWU is, has a long history uh, in Humboldt County and that uh, they want to work on the stock once it's in operation and that they're, they feel like that we can all work together uh, with the building and construction trade as we do the project labor agreement and just want to make sure that we uh, have uh, terms together that you know respect the ILWU's operational pieces and also the building and construction trades uh, and other workers during the construction portion. Property. And so that was the uh, correspondence uh, that we received. Thank you. Um, and then your report. Um, I just briefly wanted to say that um, as a follow up to previous correspondence that we had from the, the water district uh, requesting a meeting uh, to talk about the water services, uh, the uh, Samoa uh, Peninsula Working Subcommittee uh, and staff met with the Humble Bay. 
uh, municipal water district uh, last night, actually, and uh, uh, Commissioner Dale and uh, Commissioner Coleman um, and talked about uh, the new terminal project and future development projects, the Nordic Aqua Farms, other things, and then how we're going to coordinate the infrastructure with the with the um, Humboldt Bay Municipal Water District and that, you know, most people don't realize the amount of infrastructure and the size of the infrastructure that we have here and what it takes to run all this infrastructure um, and the cost and that the Harbor District and, and the Water District have been working together for a long time to try to get users for that, uh, that system. Um, but uh, it takes a lot to maintain these large systems that we have. And so we, we committed to continue to work together um, and to try to follow, find solutions. Um, and then lastly, I just want to point out that the, you know, the water district has had, like many, many of our partners has been very favorable uh, to us about um, some rate terms and other things of usage of, of the industrial water line in this interim period. And I just wanted to really, you know, say that thank you to the water board, you know, for working with us and to continue to do so. We, we truly appreciate the other special districts and the county and Eureka and the other partners that that we that we have, um, and so that's that's the report that that I wanted to give. And I believe uh, Chris, I believe you're next. Running a couple of chairs tonight, so bear with me here. Um, there you go. Oh yeah, if I could have the mouse work, that'd be helpful. Thanks, guys. So um, long and the short of it is we've had a we've had a storm and um, gave you a little facilities report. Maybe we might have indulged in some of the delicacies on Humble Bay and wanted to share that with you. But um, as we reported in our last meeting, in these winter storms, we had a large breach of the Shelter Cove breakwater. And this photograph here at the bottom of the ramp, you can see a large pile of debris. This is a, a bit of sand that's also um, small rock, which is part of the construction of the breakwater. Um, so this breach, which occurs mainly in this line, I'll show you some additional photographs, is in need of repair. Uh, we've contacted our district engineer, uh, SHN, Mike Fogett and Eric Nelson, who've been helping us with this. They brought some staff in from their Willis office. We had a field visit on Wednesday, yesterday. And so we've got two areas of failure here. The reason that we're collecting this data so urgently is with a current state of emergency in the area, we have the opportunity to uh, bring this uh, through a transmittal to FEMA and ask for them to come and do further inspection, make a determination if we might be eligible for, for some emergency funding in order to conduct these repairs and then potentially uh, some additional funding to bring them up to uh, now current standards compared to when it was done. So in the arrow to your right, we have an area where on the other side of the uh, breakwater, we have a, a large void. So when the waves crash over that, they hit and create a pool in there and it's pushing the base of that wall out further. Uh, the near shore there on your left is a almost total failure and removal of that uh, material on the breakwater that comes up against the, um, the shore side. That break area in there is approximately um, 100 feet. So we've got a pretty large area. This is not the best photo. This is as good as we can get, but just hopefully you can see in this area, there's a bit of a hole that's been created in here. And uh, again, as the waves crash over that, it's moving these rocks laterally. The challenge that we end up with and the biggest um, the issue overall is that these rocks scatter all over the launch ramp and it makes the conditions very, very hazardous. In some cases, they're not able to launch. So, um, well, I don't have a photograph of it because we're inspecting it tomorrow. We also had a failure at Redmond Range from a one dock. We know we've had some issues over the years. We lost a, uh, a post and beam there. So we're going to include an application for Redwood Marine Terminal 1 and see if we might be able to get some assistance there. Other than that, it's been a quiet month. This is a picture. This is Scott Thompson from Nordic Aqua Farms. This is Doug Sacedo, who is our Natural Resources Coordinator. This was a California Clean uh, Workday with the Peninsula Community Collaborative. If you, as you know, we've received a grant. Uh, weather didn't permit us to do a lot, but we did a little bit of cleanup and uh, shameless plug. This is my little guy, Finley, and uh, <laughs> good little... Uh, Good little family project out there. There was a lot of folks out there and uh, really grateful for Carol Vandermeer and Chris Lowen Hefner and uh, Elisa Bixley, who uh, I said her name wrong. I'm sorry, Bixler, who um, planned that day. We had an incredible turnout. So that's my report. Rob? Chris, I got you want to say something about the, 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 the fish cord over the dock. Oh, forgive me. Thank you, Larry. 
Uh, just uh, something to share uh, on uh, Tuesday night, I believe it was, we shipped 40,000 pounds of crab over the work dock here in uh, Marina. Marina doesn't typically fit, uh, have live fish go to the top of it. We had 40,000 pounds go over. There's another 10,000 pounds today and tonight, possibly a little bit more. So just want to let everybody know that, you know, things are changing. We're finding good use for our dock and we hope to continue to expand those services. Hey, Chris. Um, can you go back to your, your Shell Cove pictures? Sure, absolutely. It's an amazing cloud, great photo. I'm going in both directions. Help me, Rob. Right there. Enough. Nope, that's the other one. <laughs> that one. So <laughs> it's, I, I'm going to have to talk fast. It's that thing that has that weird roll. There you go. Okay. This one? Yeah, that one right there. So when we, in, in the, over the years, there's been a number of people in Shelter Co. that have have stated that when they when the original jetty was there, prior to the 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 re, or the the extension and the rebuild of it in two thousand one, somewhere in there, the the interior there was a there was a large gap there um, at the near shore. And it was left there purposely so that it would clean out. And apparently, and I, and I don't know this because I don't remember, but there's a lot of people in Shelter Cove that have said that it flushed the ramp off because water flowed through there in, in storm events. And I don't know if that's true, but that might be something that, that you guys consider when you have Mike out there. So when the cliffs mass waste, in the southern swells of winter, and the wind blows out of the south, it blows it towards the ramp. And so there's tremendous aggradation or buildup of the sand at the ramp. And then Thank so it can't sluice through, but then um, at any rate, that's my recollection. And that's those are the processes. I, I just know I, I get hit, I get a lot of the old timers have something to say about it. Yeah, there is a lesser volume near shore, that's true. Um, it is not a, a continuous height. However, right now there's absolutely nothing there. And so it's a channel for debris to come up. And so what we're getting is is, is a constant flow of, of, of ocean debris there. And they're coming through. So as, as we're coming up with what that design looks like, and we do have drawings, the original as-built plans. Uh, we have some modernization plans. Um, from the early 2000s. We have a drawing and assessment from Moffat Nickel, who incidentally is a current contractor for the district from 2010. And then we have what's being prepared now. So fortunately, and, and appreciate okay. your input, we are taking all of that into consideration. And yeah, uh, if we could hook it up with emergency. So it does, it take it took a decade to get the permits before. So thank you for your efforts expeditiously to get this on that track. Absolutely. So if I could just add one thing to that is that um, the condition is really degraded at this point. And as, as the board well knows, is that the Harbor District staff itself used to do the tractor launching services, you know, there. And so I've received several reports that, you know, the waves are now coming over and it's kind of like almost like rock and roll alley when you're trying to load on the trailer and it's really creating, you know, dangerous conditions, especially under some sea conditions. Um, and so, um, you know, it's a, it's a, it's, it's turning into a real health and safety issue. Um, we, we, we hope that we're going to be able to get FEMA money, um, but a lot of people use that and it really is the lifeblood of Shelter Cove. And so we appreciate the Cove notifying us of the, the damages and, you know, we're trying to do the best we can to, uh, you know, get on those repairs as quickly as possible. And with that said, we're working with the, uh, the RID. I had a call from their general manager, Justin Robbins, today to see how maybe we can get some of those debris and materials that are currently on the boat ramp removed. And they have a site that we could we could house those at. So a lot of great cooperation down there. Really kind of Justin to reach out to us. So and in case we can't get FEMA money, is there a contingency plan? How else we might be able to fund the repairs? 
there are other grants through um, FEMA. Incidentally, they have a resiliency funding. They have a pre-mitigation funding to bring projects up to current standards or for, I don't want to say sea level rise, but you know, changing conditions that are out there. Um, the staff has not done, or I have not done a complete evaluation of those yet. Uh, we are using the assistance of uh, SHN because they have a specialist who's familiar not only with a number of the funding mechanisms, but actually has done a number of FEMA specific grants from different events that have occurred. Uh, she works out of the Willits office. So I have a meeting tomorrow with Mike Bogut and Eric Nelson. I think I'll learn a lot more at that point in time, and hopefully be, be able to bring a little bit more information back would, to our next meeting. Would voting and waterways be, I mean, isn't that a warranty there, there claim is an, on, their, on their part? Yeah, so there are options with voting and waterways. Voting and waterways typically is gonna be more on the recreational side, which we have here. So we certainly would qualify and they have participated with us in the past. Uh, at this point, we're just turning over the coins of grants. Um, yeah. And there are a number, like Rob just whispered in my ear, you know, the, the Coastal Conservancy yeah. could be another potential option. And there are a lot of different agencies that are out there. And, um, you know, the, the biggest piece, I think, is getting that grant specialist involved who knows these different programs and get out of there. But uh, uh, Boating the Waterways recently approached us actually and let us know that one of the projects we had done has now been through its 20-year useful life. And they're interested in working with us once again. And that letter sits on my desk. So great suggestion. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Rob. Uh, so just FYI, there's a lot of state legislature either passed or uh, being entertained related to offshore wind. So AB 525 isn't even listed up there. That's an important one. Uh, AB 205 recently passed, and we're evaluating that. Uh, AB 3 and 80 are both introduced and being considered by the legislature in March. Uh, and AB 344 is something I don't think we're really going to track, but it's of great interest to RCEA and ultimately uh, the uh, transmission uh, challenges throughout the state. So just FYI, we're tracking all these bills. And the uh, Baywater intake system um, and the outfall, uh, there's a lot of uh, permits in progress. I don't feel like I need to go over all of those unless you'd like me to, but there's a lot in motion currently for all of that. And then FYI, the uh, Enhanced Infrastructure Finance District, which uh, if you don't know, is a special district on the Samoa Peninsula established by the county staffed by the county, but it's a special, it's a separate special district, um, has initiated a contract with Moffat Nickel to complete a baywide offshore wind master plan scoping, effectively. It's a kind of a, uh, an early stage of a master plan to look at what is possible beyond our site when it comes to offshore wind. So looking at all of the coastal dependent industrial lands on the county and city sides. So FYI, that's underway, uh, the contracting's underway, and they had a public meeting about that a couple of weeks ago. And I think that's my report. Oh, well, then also be aware that the Tula Lot Island Spartina removal project uh, is also very active currently, and the removal processes should begin in a couple of weeks or you know maybe March. That's good news. Awesome. And that's my report. Yeah, so with that, since that's, um... Just the, that we, I, I executed the contract with the, the WIA tribe uh, to do a seven years uh, monitoring um, for that. Um, and so that's getting ready to kick off. And so the very, the in the next, you may notice when you drive over that Caltrans basically put a little pad over there. That's so that the workers can safely, you know, park on the side and access uh, Tallawood Island. Um, but the public should be aware that, and I really encourage people to be uh, safe um, when you're driving on Highway 255, because there will be people parking and working uh, literally for the sec next seven years uh, on Tallawood Island to do Spartina eradication on the, the entire island. And so that's something that we're working in conjunction with uh, uh, the Wiat Tribe, um, Redwood, Co Redwood Community Action Agency is the is the main contractor, and so we're really happy to be partnering with those entities. And Caltrans, of course. Awesome. All right, Commissioner. No, no, District Council. 
Nothing for me tonight. Nothing? Nothing. It's a good thing. And I see we have correspondence from Mark. So um, I guess we'll move on to Commissioner Committee reports. Commissioner Newman, please. Well, crab season started, I guess we set our pots on the 17th of January and uh, started pulling on the 19th. I think for the most part, it's been a pretty successful season for, for most folks, except for the fact that we're fishing for 40% of what we made last year. Um, everywhere else there's been inflation and it seems like in the seafood industry, there's been a lot of deflation. Uh, it's not just not just crabs, but I think it's something that uh, can't go on. But uh, anyway, it's been a pretty good season for most folks. Um, with some of the larger boats really having some pretty outstanding landings in comparison to recent years. Uh, I will totally agree with the uh, comment from Kevin Penn earlier about the parking. I think the situation should be addressed. I've noticed it myself that uh, with the out-of-town boats and the crews and whatnot, the, the, front, the front row is getting taken up and I can definitely understand uh, with this business, we need to, uh, think about providing a better situation there. Um, another note, I participated, <clears throat> participated, I went fishing this morning early, so uh, with the Pacific Outfitters, Pack Out, Green Team uh, in the Eureka, in, in, in partnership with the city of Eureka on the, what they call the Trash Bash, where we cleaned up below the Bayshore Mall for a couple hours. And wow, there's a lot of stuff down there. And uh, it was really felt good to do some work on that and got to work with Mayor Burgell. So it's a lot of fun. And that's about it for me. Good work, Kevin. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's it. Larry, Larry's been trying to keep me busy on a number, a number of subcommittee meetings, including uh, with our with our labor um, and then with development on the peninsula and a few others um, agree with Aaron and um, wondering if maybe one option would be to designate some parking areas as time like 20 minute or even one hour parking like mm -hmm. keep them free um, but I'm sure yeah I encourage staff to like look at possible solutions because that's easy to do and that's enforceable. Thank yeah, we'll that. report back to you. We'll report back to you on <laughs> parking at the next meeting. Uh, yeah, because you know that has been something, and I'm I'm excited to see so much uh, you know sale of you know now crab, but you know fish and everything off the docks, and that's something I think we want to continue to see and help encourage and promote in a way that the district is able to. So, if, yeah, if there's simple solutions like that that we can find, that's great. Um, I don't think we're, oh, uh, it's that time of year again. April 1st, it's going to be this year, is the, I don't know what, maybe 22nd or 23rd annual perilous plunge to support the Redwood Community, or Redwood uh, Discovery Museum for children. So this year, once again, RCEA will be putting together a team to jump into the water. And so I encourage anyone who's not seeing that come out and watch or to go to the Redwood Discovery Museum's website and uh, donate on to uh, whoever you most want to see jump into the bay. And uh, I think a lot of people might want to pay good money to watch a commissioner jump into the bay. Um, and then I did, I was thinking of bringing this up before, but I'll bring it up now. Um, and I'd like to announce that um, once again, like I said before, the, there's no uh, item on the agenda about any lease agreements uh, on the peninsula tonight. And so any comments on that would be in public comment. And so leave it up to, if, in case anybody did want to comment on that for tonight, I'd leave it up to your discretion. Would you be willing to open up public comment again? And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe nobody needs to comment on that. But I don't think. I, that item is about a contractor, not about uh, 
I mean, maybe we could entertain comment on that sign, but I'll bring it up first. Your discretion, you can do it. Thank uh, you, Mr. Chairman. So, I can do whatever I like. And within, yeah, sure, why not? That's why Ryan's here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, so that, that's enough for me. Thanks. Commissioner Higgins. Oh, I've been spending too much time at my computer. I don't have much colorful. So, <laughs> you have any pictures? No, no. Well, you know, actually, though, I was out in Coblo uh, working with uh, Round Valley High School students, and we're going to go deep plant some cottonwoods and willows, and then they're going to find out where those kinds of trees grow and how their neighbors can go appropriate some. And we're going to have a riparian revolution in Round Valley <laughs> without a permit. We're going to be back away from the stream. We're going to dig holes in the pasture. We're going to get the cottonwoods to grow. If you get like six feet and you get it down in the ground, it's in the water table and it'll go out 24 inches in diameter and up 50 feet in a decade. And so um, that's hopeful. I'm also hanging out with fourth and fifth graders in Laytonville Elementary School. They just love fish stories. And I'm uh, interbedding education with our riparian restoration projects there. Um, and we're also teaching them about water conservation and forest health. And since I got up ahead of steam, we're putting in a very significant forest health grant for the Leightonville and the 10 mile watershed surrounding to thin from below, to prevent conflagration, to uh, revive the oak forest and get rid of the furs that have incurred since the end of traditional burning, to reintroduce low intensity fire, to get the water back, to get more food for the animals and putting a grant together like this. I think it's giving me gray hair, but <laughs> <laughs> so not on the street. And now, I'm, now you know uh, why I have uh, repressed fishing for steelhead right now. I should be out wetting a line. It's time. The, the finny tribe is coursing and I can, I can kind of feel them with with my lateral line. I know they're running, but I can't go and catch them. Well, I can go, I just can't catch them. Y'all done? <laughs> yeah. I couldn't catch ones they hit me in the head. Um, so we, I don't have a whole lot to report. We, we, we met last night. Um, I thought that was, I thought that was interesting and good and something that I, uh, I think there's going to be a lot more of those types of meetings, mostly infrastructure on the peninsula, which I think there's a lot of people that are involved in that, that probably doesn't involve the Harbor district, but it's our projects. So, and I think, I think we had um, commissioners, they're commissioners, are they commissioners? No, they're board members, board members, Lat and, and Rupp on their committee. And, I, I I think we probably need to expand that to um, some to include some others because um, there's going to be there's going to be a lot of activity out here that is going to need some uh, some effort put into by the county by the, the the special districts that are here the peninsula small peninsula. Um, district anyways um I, th I thought it was good i thought it was interesting other than that i don't have i i don't know if you anybody's been to petrolia have you been out to petrolia lately no but i heard the road is <laughs> that was rough yeah it's probably i don't know i i don't know that that's ever going to get fixed yeah that's yeah. going to be a that's going to be a a rough show they're they're not very hopeful as far as fixing the roads my understanding the county yeah the the earth flows along that road have always been problematic. And so I never drove it at a high rate of speed for fear that I would go over a rise and my car would be in the air because of the subsidence of the road. It would be now. They got all kinds of cones and signs and stuff, but yeah. Um, all right. So we're moving on to unfinished business. Item. 10A, review of subcommittees and change subcommittees and committee assignments as needed. Can in we your, just get into this? Yeah, in package, in the package on page 36 is a list of the 
Yeah, and since Craig committees. Benson's not here, we should definitely. Have oh yeah, Craig. Craig's gonna get some. Yeah. And uh, so I, I would submit for consideration that uh, Mr. Benson, now serving the fourth district, uh, would be uh, part of the two by two committee with Commissioner Newman. I'll second that. Um, I would. Do we need a shelter code committee? Or should we reconvene or, you know? I, I do. I think right now it's probably not a bad idea, especially if oh, we... No, I, I'm always I know you're always on And meetings during fishing season. Um, so I'll stay on that one. But I'm especially really wondering... If especially if we start really doing yeah. this, this new jetty project. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, we're going to be doing spending a lot of time on Shelter Code. Yeah, and we can, we can Zoom. So, okay, good. Thank you. Uh, that answers that question. Um, can I recommend maybe we just go go through these one by one? Yeah, why don't, like why don't we do that? Order? Why don't we do that? Well, I have one more suggestion. Okay, one more but suggestion. I'll hold it. Go okay, ahead. you can. Okay, or not. Uh, Let's uh, start with the Humble Bay Development Association. So currently it's Higgins and Newman. Marks is on there, but who they, we've already filled that place. No, he's a public member now. He's a public member. Yeah. And you're back on as the board member. Okay, so it's basically the same five. My recommendation is we keep the same five okay. for a, a couple of months and then bring, because we want, there's so much activity that's getting ready to take place. And then we could bring this back up because I know Pat has expressed an interest and in, he's been on it for a long time about possibly shifting over, but it would we'd really appreciate well, it. such an enthusiasm from Mr. Benson. And you know, it's just like he's new, he's got a lot of energy. Uh, he's got some chops he's demonstrated in the community. He's a prophet, humble. Um, so, I mean, I, I like to give him some space. So um, the other thing I was going to say, since I'm dribbling the basketball, I think he should be on the dredge committee. We need new energy on the long fence smell. And he's a diplomat. He's oriented to natural resource stuff. And, and the fact that we haven't been able. We're going to we're going to get to the dredge committee. But right now we're talking about. We're talking about the Humboldt Bay Development Association. We've already we need a motion on that. Now, do we, oh, no, can we, actually, can we pass exactly them all? It's, it's okay. Pleasure, so yeah, we can do them all. And if I'm mistaken, you can just. You can just I got I got a list. I got a list, and I can just appoint. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to move on to the Budget Ad Hoc Committee, which is which is um, Commissioner Coleman and myself. Are you okay staying there? Anybody else have a, a burning desire to be on the Budget I, I think Committee? That you two are on a lot of committees. My not I like you guys. I just you guys you guys are all <laughs> you think of being guys look, all these I'm tired of looking at you guys. No, you guys you. Commissioner Newman, would you would you take my place on that? Um, uh, on the budget committee. Would you take my place? <laughs> <laughs> all right. I think Mr. Benson needs to spot on that. <laughs> yeah. Benson's gonna be on a lot of committees, isn't he? Can I get a stamp for that? I'm gonna get tired of writing his name. Um, you guys have been doing an awfully good job. Well, I, I the, the budget committee is not a huge is not a huge undertaking. I, I, I well, no, I, I I'd much rather I'd much rather um, keep my budget committee role and turn loose of my labor relations role because we are negotiating currently a new contract with staff. Um, I think it's going to be interesting and fun. Um, so you want but Dale and Benson on budget? That's what I heard. Sure, Dale Can and Benson. Oh, what? Well, yeah, okay, okay, yeah, I think that's fine. Then labor relations, Dale wants to give up labor relations. Mm -hmm. so I, I, I would like to, I, I can continue on labor relations. Sure, that's uh, as uh, Greg put it, it's fun. No, I, I mean, I, I honestly, it's, it's interesting and it's important. You know, we want to, we want to do right by our staff and nice labor every day. Yeah, so. No, and it, and I think, I think we've got a new re renewed interest from the, from the, the, um, the representative from OE three. Is it OE three? Mm -hmm. So I, I mean, their their Felix is is pretty good. Um, you just got to keep on task. I'd have an agenda. Because right, he likes to talk over and over and over about the same thing, but he's got it. He's he's got good ideas. I think he's, um, I think he's 
going somewhere with it. The dredge committee, the ad hoc we dredge committee. We only had one, we had Coleman and Newman. Sorry, I'm just, I need to keep notes. I'm writing them down too, Chris, so we will compare notes. Thank you. All right. Um, and I'm just putting people wherever the hell I want them because they say they told me I could. I know you should. Ryan just say, gave you me the, want the two of us on the labor relations, so we'll be like give them whatever they want. Newman and Coleman. <laughs> Liberals for labor. <laughs> I can I, kick you under the table. I have <laughs> I have a feeling yeah, you'll be just opinion. fine. Um the dredging ad hoc. Higgins, you want off and you want Benson on? I think so. We have an unresolved issue and I am powerless to resolve it. So, you know, the, the permits are central to dredging and we are um, about 10 years off schedule from my, from my score keeping. Okay. Uh, we've never been able to use our suction dredge because we can't get a permit. And yet what we do right now is we go out there with a big, huge clamshell and stir so it you want off. And then drive it out to the hoods and dump it in the ocean. And so, like, how come we can't use a suction dredge and redistribute it for climate change resilience? Because we can't get a permit. Well, we're working. Incredulous, we're, really. we're working on that. So that's I, why that's why I need relief. So I, I took you off. I put Craig on. Yeah. Um. So he's been added to two so far. We'll keep track of this. Um. Shelter Cove. I think Dale and Higgins are going to stay oh, there. Oh yeah, we're staying. Staying of course. Um. Yeah, no, and and right now they haven't been getting as much love as they probably need to, so we got some things going on down there. Um, uh, the so Samoa Peninsula Infrastructure Offshore Wind Energy Subcommittee is Dale and Coleman. I think we're going to keep that. that. We're going to keep that one intact. The two by two, Marks is gone. Benson's on. That's an automatic because that's his district. Um, and Newman, you're on that too. We haven't had a meeting with two by two in a while. But I heard from the from oh my gosh our, our newly elected city councilwoman um, yeah uh, Kunz, Kunz. not Kim um, no, Leslie is on it Leslie no Leslie's gone Leslie's gone she's on the council but she's not on the committee right yeah. Still so yes, I've been speaking with the city of Eureka. Okay. We're, as soon as you appoint, we're ready to schedule. So we we've we've, we've got we've got Benson and Newman appointed. It's their district. Um, it's going to learn not to come to a meeting, huh? Yeah. Well, that's only three. Um, pilotage advisory subcommittee. That's me and and um, Commissioner Newman, and I'd like to stay there. I wanted to see if we could. Um, just have a briefly have a conversation about this. There's 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 kind of issues about um, right now. It's it, it's limited to pilot advisory, and there's kind of all these issues about in bay like Anchorage cruise and uh, cruise ships and um, you know tariffs course. and fees that would apply to all the facilities around the bay. And so I'd like to just to change that to the just the port subcommittee. That way, it's it's much broader. If oh, you would, if you would consider that, I would, I would, I would very much consider that, and keep the same people on it. Well, I defer to you. Sounds like yeah. you guys just got more. I, I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine with where it's at right now. Um, the volunteer fireboat program liaison. Stay the course. Anybody else got a license? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll go take the thing around the back. You, see, you just need to grow your mustache out. If you're going to be a fireman, you got to have a mustache. I tried once, it didn't work. <laughs> you and me both. Um, a commercial fisherman's commercial fishing subcommittee is Newman and Coleman. You guys still good there? I mean, I, I would be willing to go on the uh, Redwood Region Economic Development Commission if I dropped but then i'm getting too many subcommittees so. no there's another good slot for benson he could he's diplomatic he's new i i'm i'm not i'm the past president of the board of the of redeck but i'm the i have one more year as the immediate past president on the board and then i'm out mm -hmm. and i would i would i've enjoyed it thoroughly and I think it's a great opportunity. So Marks is out. If you want to be on that, um, alternate as the alternate, 
Room oh, that's just an alternate. Okay. So Marx is my alternate okay. currently. I see. So, yeah, so I'll stay on the fisherman subcommittee then. And then would you like to take it in a year? I, yeah, sure. Why not? We'll cross that bridge when we get there. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, we'll keep you on the commercial fishing subcommittee, or would you like to be off of that? Uh, unless somebody wants to fight me for it, which and they'll win. Well, I guess the, well, we had talked about with Benson, he has two committees. No, he's got one. He's on one, two, three right now. Oh, yeah, I apologize. Um, I've got one, two, three, four. I mean, I, I feel like I have a good relationship there, and probably best not to. Yeah. Okay. Do you, do you know anything about fishing, Aaron? No, Aaron. Maybe you should put <laughs> Greg, one thing I'd mention is because Redac is a JPA, that should be voted by the board as to who our appointments are to that commission. Other, all the other subcommittees can be done by you. <clears throat> Wasn't done that way the last time. I just got slammed into it. You must not have been at that meeting. <laughs> um, okay, so we'll we'll separate that one out. All right, and I and I want to talk about. We used to have a Woodley Island subcommittee, and maybe it's time to maybe it's time that we we do that again um get get give staff some help with just determining what would work and what wouldn't work i mean i, I don't know but i'm sure that there's public probably public in the audience and staff that does know a way to solve some of these little issues like parking um and i i i would pretend to know how to do it i would like to serve in that committee if we form one Jeremy? Can we just have the, the commercial fishermen subcommittee do that? Because a lot of the issues dealing with fishermen are so the commercial the, fishing uh, and that the end. And we just can we do that? Yeah. Is that okay? Is that okay? Sure. Because <laughs> it's hard to keep track of so many subcommittees. All right. And, um, and, and they would maybe bring some cookies to the meetings. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm going to be quiet. Yeah, Jesus. All right, so so we're, gonna you're trying to cut down on committees, not I increase am, committees. I am. Okay. Um, I that that that's to me. We don't charge him a lot of rent, but he should be able to have parking for his customers, right? Okay. Oh, I can go out there with a can of spray paint. Solve your problem. He has been. <laughs> he has been there a while. Parking. <laughs> um. All right. So, like so we have, uh, we've got the way I have it right now. I've got um, Higgins, Newman, Marx, Unia, Zerlang on Humboldt Bay Development Association. Um, that hasn't changed. Dale and Benson on the budget budget committee. Newman and Coleman on the labor relations committee. Benson and Newman on the dredging committee. Dale and Higgins on the RID or the Shelter Cove RID committee. Dale and Coleman on the, the offshore wind and Samoa Peninsula committee. Benson and Newman on the Tuba Two. Dale and Newman on the port committee. Newman on the fireboat program liaison committee. Um, Newman and Coleman on the commercial fishing committee, subcommittee. Can I have a motion to accept all of those? So second. No. I'm, I, I all, got beat on the second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. That'll teach you, Benson, not so to come to a meeting. Clarify one thing. Oh. Okay. The motion can stand, but just should call. And what did you want to clarify? Uh, just to clarify, is that when generically when we call the dredging committee, is that what we actually it's 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 dredging, it's it's you know dewatering, beneficial reuse, mitigation associated with long fence melt, and so it's it's a broad category of everything that's under the umbrella of dredging is kind of what what that committee does. So should we call po it something post, more broad? No, no, I think it's fine. fine. I think it's fine. I just want to clarify that yeah. dredging, et cetera. Post, post vote. Can we? Do we have anybody that would like to comment 
on our our committee selections um on our just our previous vote any for anyone from the public like to comment please come to the microphone state your name my name's robin great stewart and i'm just speaking for myself to not night not for any organization i might belong to um but i was just curious you said something about doing a woodley island committee but I wondered if it would be good to have a liveaboard committee too, somebody that met with their liveaboards or represented them. And I'm saying this from a personal um, position. I used to liveaboard for eight years. So it was a long time ago, um, but I just thought it might be nice to have those people feel like they've got a connection to the board. Thank you, Robin. Any other comments regarding our previous item or our previous motion and vote? Seeing none, I'm going to move on to the a vote regarding appointments to the Redwood Region Economic Development Commission. As a JPA, it requires a separate vote. Currently, it is Dale and um. Did we say Stevens? Yeah, that would be, I volunteered as alternate. Okay. So move. Second. Aye. The public. The public. <laughs> yeah. And then. Anybody, any, would anybody like to comment on the REDEC appointments? I just know why Greg likes the REDEC so much. They always have snacks. There. They have very good snacks, as a matter of fact. Snacks. Shirley is incredible. All right. Although she hasn't been the last two meetings, so it's oh. it's been lacking M and M's or something. But um, thank you for that. Uh, so we have a, a motion and a second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carries. Okay. Can I just comment no. on <laughs> Pat. okay, Pat? Good luck. Uh, that this isn't like our only chance to do subcommittees. And so I think that if it does make sense to either split off the Woodley Island subcommittee or a liver board subcommittee or anything like that, or continue with that, I think, you know, we can revisit that. Mm -hmm. I was uh, thinking of renaming it the tenant relations and commercial fishermen committee. Yeah. 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 And then, and then potentially uh, um, any of those meetings, probably should be published on the island multiple places. Mm -hmm. um, and and for people that are on liveaboard, most of the, most of the, the liveaboard tenants are sure, certainly better at looking at our bulletin board than uh, a lot of the fishermen. The fishermen don't pay as much attention to that. Great. <laughs> so about three years ago, if you recall about three years ago, we had a committee and when we were evaluating fees, and it was uh, the liver board feed, and so we had a liver board subcommittee, and we also had yeah. judge fees, and so we we analyzed the fees, and then we brought in the liver boards, and uh, uh, there were there were fishermen that were appointed to that um, at that time, um, and so um, that as you said, we could do that under the Woodley Island. Yeah. Um, well, and it, it depends on issues that arise too. Well, there's always so if any big issue comes up, then. More than likely, we'll have to kind of get more active uh, in getting them. So I am moving on. We are done with 10A and moving on to 11A, which is new business, review of cruise ship marketing and consider establishing a cruise ship fee. Yeah, so basically this big old uh, chart here is something that um, it's it's gone through several different versions and and. Uh, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. But for the most part, is that the, the the Harbor District has been leading kind of this broad sort of coalition of how are we doing this cruise ship, and for the most part, it's a it's a partnership. It's kind of a loose partnership that we've been working on for the last uh, ever since I've been here, really the four or five years. And it's the the City of Eureka, the Harbor District, and the County, and then there's volunteer groups. Um, that has involved uh, Eureka Main Street and the Chamber and all these different groups and plus different volunteers uh, that have just uh, been helping to put this thing together. And so we meet periodically and that we basically have these different committees. And the, and the stuff that's in kind of light blue 
is, is uh, really what the Harbor District has been mainly doing. Uh, and then the green is kind of the city of Eureka's uh, role that they've been doing. And then some of the other roles are like volunteers and some of the other different pieces. And so um, this, this kind of loose coordination that we've been doing, um, you know, we've been fairly successful. And uh, just to kind of jump over is, or wait a second, I, we're yeah. not down one more. And so basically, you know, you can see the cruise ships uh, in 2022 that uh, came in and the number of passengers that, uh, that came in. And then in 2023, these are the ones that are currently kind of on the horizon. And you can see in May, there's two, two uh, ships uh, that are, uh, and I won't say we're 100%, but yes, uh, in May 7th, we're expecting the scenic eclipse to come back here, and then very likely on the 11th, and then uh, on the 27th of, of September, you know, another cruise ship. And then these are the other ones that are really sort of still in inquiring. Um, and this is all being done with kind of just us doing our best to try to make this work. And so... Um, We've been having a lot of discussions with Eureka and the county and the and the Harbor District and our partners about really how do we take this to the next level, um, and I really want to you know sort of stress is that um, you know there's a lot of benefits to doing this. We haven't had a lot of activity in the port, and so the more ships we get, just having more ships, uh, what that does is that. Um, the longshoremen come up. It puts the, every ship that comes in, the longshoremen, uh, they have a job. Every time a ship comes in, the tugboat operators get a job. The bar pilots, you know, all of these kinds of things is that we haven't had that much activity. And so every ship makes a difference when you're kind of struggling. Um, you know, we've been struggling for a long time. We've got a lot of things on the horizon, but we need to keep the greases going. And so it's not like there's money in this thing. It's not like people are making uh, money on this, but it really is about keeping our maritime community going. That's really is the heart and soul of this thing. Plus, um, it makes the community feel really good. You can see when a cruise ship comes into town, the number of people that drive down and just take a look at the cruise ship. There's a, there's a certain amount of excitement. Uh, you know, myself, the buses didn't work the last time I think I brought this up. And so we all chipped in and we took the passengers in our car, you know, three, four at a time. I took 11 trips. So they rode with you? They rode with me to Old Town Eureka, you know, and talking to them, taking them in, listening to them, you know, just whatever we can do to help uh, get this thing going. And so um, what we'd like to kind of start to consider is to, instead of us just all doing this on their own, of trying to do a, a memorandum of agreement with uh, most likely in the beginning, it'd be the city of Arcata, or I'm sorry, the city of Eureka and the Harbor District in the beginning, because we can generally move a little bit quicker than the County of Humboldt. And then we'd like to bring the County of Humboldt in and have the city of Eureka has said they would be willing to bring, to put some funding into this so that we could either, um, you know, the, the, the Harbor District could you know, either utilize a part-time or some other staff person that we have in time, or that we would contract for some of these marketing services and things. And so in the first place, I wanted to just kind of bring cruise ships to the forefront and to say, in a couple of months, you're going to see another one here. Um, it's a lot of work to put these things, things together. And what we really need to do is to get from where we've been at the last couple of years at like three ships, and you can see then to get to five, and by the time we realistically think that we can get to seven to nine realistically in the next couple of years, and then it starts to become uh, a regular occurrence and people are starting to, to make funds and uh, make it a go. And so we, we've been really looking, and as you recall, when the board adopted the budget, there was, we said, you know, we think we'd like to have a cruise ship be, uh, to be established and that we would start to look into that. You know, I've really looked at the cruise ship fees, um, but that's part of the reason why I wanted you to have this port subcommittee is because there's really these larger issues that go into when you're establishing these tariffs. And there's this Federal Maritime Commission. We have tariff schedules. We're members of CAPA. We have to get licensed in order to, you know, charge fees. We're supposed to, you know, have all these regulations that come into play. And as, as much as, you know, we like to think we're the Wild West and we can kind of just adopt these and do what we, we want to, um, there are all these rules that go into place. And so I just don't really think we're going to be quite ready in the next month to adopt this. 
because of everything that's supposed to happen uh, to be in compliance when you adopt these fees. Um, and so I think the fees most likely are going to be a longer term thing. And quite frankly, it's something that we're going to have to look at in conjunction with the new terminal. What are the fees? And just sort of setting the stage, the way this is, this you know, the port of Humboldt Bay, which is really is the way we are when um, you're supposed to have one set of fees, no matter what port a ship goes into, whether it's Fairhaven or the Snyder Dock or it's RMT-1. If, if a ship comes into port, then you can have different fees for each one of those, but they're all supposed to be published and regulated under the port authority. And you can't just make up your fees as you're, you're going in. Ships need to know before they take off from the port that they go into and know exactly what those fees are. And this is all part of these larger maritime regulatory systems. And as the port of Humboldt Bay becomes more and more and more active, um, we've, we've kind of been a little bit, uh, you know, not 100% up to speed. I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh, and we have to have a whole new regulatory system that is we're going to slowly start to prepare for, for the new terminal with the offshore wind industry and the cruise ship. And so initially, when I put this together, I was thinking, okay, we could we can get this done in a couple of month period and get this fee adopted. And at this point in time, I'm really just thinking we have to take a, a little bit of a step back here, make sure we're we're doing this this right, and we should really look at the overall structure uh, because we've been in communication with the Federal Maritime Commission. Um, in the last week, the board had authorized me previously to execute the Federal uh, uh, Maritime Commission agreement that uh, CAFA has, that the Harbor District has with all the 13 other ports in the state of California, LA, Long Beach, San Diego, and that we all agree that we're going to share these tariffs and that, you know, we're not going to independently adopt them. When we adopt a, a, a fee, we send them to CAFA. The other ports get to review our fees and see where they're at in comparison to everybody else's. There's a whole process that is is uh, is laid out here. And so the bottom line is, is uh, with this you know long diatribe, um, what I want to do with the board's permission is to continue to work with the county and the city of Eureka, and then to come back uh, next month with a scope of work and a a plan to uh, that we would go forward and to say, how would the Harbor District participate in kind of this cruise ship arrangement? I'm not asking you to commit anything. Um, it really is, do we want to continue to put the same amount of effort as we had before, or do we want to boost it up a little bit? Um, you know, we, we think that we can boost it up a little bit and really start to see some dividends because we've been getting the cruise ships to come here in a market that's probably the worst it's ever been for the cruise ship industry in the last couple of years with COVID. And so people like the city of Eureka, we're getting a really good response. And so anyway, I just wanted to open that up to the board and see what generally your thoughts are on uh, what level of, of activity that we should put into cruise ships. That's a lot of positive sentiment in the city of Eureka and around around this and you know they they turn out when the cruise ships come in and kind of uh really uh, it's it's got value just kind of who we are and people really identify with it sign favorable in terms of our continuing to support it there's some really uh important reasons to have more just more tonnage coming in out of the bay you get we get more dredging we get more attention from the army corps and whatnot and you know the the docks and um, pilots, ship assist, everybody gets a piece. It's good for the economy, and uh, I would just hope if we get some more some more of this commerce, we'll have a nicer facility someday for them to, to dock at that doesn't look like the current one. And you know, it, it, we need to move forward. Commissioner Coleman. Uh, yeah, agreed. I think it's. It's worth looking at. It's like nobody expects a like, cruise ships aren't going to be like the one thing that's going to revitalize the bay, but they're a piece of the puzzle. And I think we should do what we can to be able to welcome them in a you know a manageable and sustainable manner. So 
make sense to establish. I, I I tend to agree. I mean, I, the question I have is, you know, are we willing to pay? Are we, you know, we used to pay ten thousand dollars a year with the city and the county uh, to market, and that's probably going to come back to us in some form or another. So, and the um, I think the diversity that they bring, if we can get past a certain a certain level of ships, um, you know, we get we. We'll start having more tours. We'll start having more to offer, and and maybe we'll have a some sort of dock that they can tie up to. That's not uh... <laughs> okay. And then and then so Larry, you said you know, you said you're working with you're working with uh, uh, the port uh, the our uh, port um, Kappa? Be, Kappa, um to fix prices. Mm -hmm. And do we have to do we have to worry about RICO or being because if we're all doing the same levies and fees, that's and we're organizing to do that and communicating those same fees, do we have to worry about RICO violations in that? No, that's what this fair that's what this uh, FMC agreement is all about. It basically it, uh, it basically says that the ports are all collaborating together and that we're doing this in a manner that uh, we are working together and we're reviewing prices, but at the same time, we are not uh, uh, violating any federal laws. Okay. And this is, believe me, this has been, for the last year, we've seen about five or six drafts. The attorneys have all drafted this thing. The, uh, I, I, it's been a while, but basically the attorneys from LA and Long Beach and San Diego and Oakland and all of these attorneys have reviewed this. The Kappa attorneys, the Federal Maritime Commission has been reviewing this. This is a system that's been in place uh, in California since 1954. And all of these, uh, not just in California, but the ports on the East Coast, the West Coast, or I'm sorry, Gulf, et cetera, have very similar systems. Okay, I, I just it just came up. Because yeah. if you were doing it, you guys would get in trouble, you'd go to jail. Uh, just one more thing I wanted to add, and I don't remember on that flow chart of who is all on the committee, but it, it can also include representatives of like local tour operators and things like that. Because I remember, I don't know if there's miscommunication or something and when the last cruise ship came on, but a number of people, smaller people who operate tours and services uh, felt like they couldn't um, connect to the ship to be able to offer their services to, to the um, to the customers. Or so to that the I, I, I worked on this a lot when I was at the city. Um, that's up to the cruise ship itself. And they want to contract with tour providers and they are effectively a monopoly. And they, they're the ones that control that. We won't have any influence. And the whole basis of this is to just uh, promote and facilitate more yeah. cruise ships. So it's not a it's not a profit. We're still going to be we're still going to be going in the hole, I think, on the cruise ship promotion. But we need well, that's we like this help. That's right? what Larry's view. Yeah. That's why he wants to Can generate. Put that table up one more time. So yeah, that's what this is really is all about. Is this is this? So this portion is really is kind of the marketing side. So on the marketing side is really you know preparing these marketing materials and working with the tour operators here, right? And so in the first place, you get the the tour operators have to get into the marketing materials. Right. And so that's what that side of the equation is, is really getting into the, the marketing materials, getting the local tour people to get into the marketing materials. Then what you do is then you give those marketing materials to the cruise ships. And then once the cruise ship is here, then it really is. This is the coordinating the tours. But anybody that's been to a hotel or a concierge or something, the, the tour, they make money on every, the, the cruise ship makes money on each tour that somebody signs up for. And so that's why they want to be in control of, of the tours of who they sell it to. And so the trick is, is really get into the marketing materials. We want local people to get into the marketing materials. So we give those to the cruise, cruise companies to say, these are the local tours that are available. And then the cruise ship 
they, as Rob said, the cruise ship makes the decision on which tours they want to offer to their passengers. Yeah. And that's what I was just saying, of like doing some good outreach with some of the smaller, well, you know, I, like a couple of the ones that I spoke to are cannabis tours, which her cruise ships would love, or at least cruise ship passengers, and, uh, you know, like uh, bicycle tours, like people who have very small businesses that parents would love to. Okay, so if you're okay with this, what my plan is is basically to have the two by two committee uh, meet with this would to set up the meeting with the two by two committee with the city of Eureka and our two by two committee at, over the course of the next month, and we'll set up a meeting and have this as be in a dialogue for discussion, and then hopefully we'll be able to bring something back to you at the next meeting to consider. I think that's perfect. I will I will order them. <laughs> Um, all right, so we have a motion and second. Do we have a motion and second, Chris? There's no action required. It was an action item. But it was an item, so it still goes to the point. Get the, get the chairman. Well, I'm, get, I'm getting there. Okay. I'm getting there. Thanks. I'm feeling like pestering you today. I know, you really are. Yeah, I'm well, really on your we're on TV now. Yeah, yeah. Are we? <laughs> um, Andy's not here. Would, would anybody from the public care to comment to the board on our cruise ship marketing and establishing a cruise ship fee. Please. No, come to the microphone, state your name and, and all that good stuff. And Carla Osborne, I live in Manila. And I just, it just sounds like there's no downsize at all to the cruise ships. I really wondered if anybody could speak to any negatives of the cruise ships. Is there, what, how are we set up for waste and um is there's got to be some kind of an environmental um impact of having well, cruise ships some of that i mean I, okay. typically we don't we we don't answer questions during comments but um cruise ships they maintain their own waste their own water they pretty much are self-contained when they're in the bay they they don't discharge anything within state waters so um they're relatively clean in the bay. I'm okay. not sure I would say that. Do they plug into um, electrics when they're at the dock? They do not. Okay. Um, they, they could. That's something that we could mandate. Well, we, we could. We don't have any of their infrastructure. Yeah, we don't have any the infrastructure. Dock. So that would be part of this. Like building ships. that up, like an all electric dock. That they would be or a dock. So there, is, so there is exhaust from the ship when it's parked. Yeah, generation, generally the generators are, are, are less polluting than the motors. The motors. Oh, I got you. So they're just tier the four. generators. Yeah, the, I think they have to have tier four if they stop in California ports or if they run in California ports. Um, the, I, I would say the, the only real, I mean, if from, there's, there's a downside from the cruise ships and from our reputation, if we do a poor job of handling the ship and we damage the ship or the dock is inadequate and damages the ship, We've had uh, poor reports on from other captains or two other captains about um, ships coming in here, um, which makes it harder for the marketing committee to get another ship in here. Um, those sorts okay. of things. As far as there, there's there's always danger when you bring a ship into the port. So you're always in danger of a spill of some sort. It doesn't matter what kind of ship it is. And we bring ships in, not every day, but you know, once or more times per week, there's some sort of maritime um, uh, traffic in here that is a potential. Okay, thank you. Uh, and I think the cruise ship industry as a whole globally is, probably not the most, in a very big understatement, not the most environmentally conscious industry. Uh, the immediate impacts to Humboldt, you know, we, because of the size of the bay, we're getting smaller ships and like, you know, the giant like carnival type cruise ships and stuff like that. But, you know, I think it's worthwhile to realize that, you know, the, but like a lot of industries, you know, that operate globally, once they get out into international waters, it's hard to know exactly what they're doing. Whether, you know, 
we have any control over that, you know, by them stopping in Humboldt Bay or not, whether they have any impact on the, the larger cruise ship industry in the, the world, I don't think we do. Um, and we have, do have some opportunity to increase some tourism um, within Humboldt. So I think overall, it's probably a good thing. But I, I, I wouldn't want to ever be on record of saying like the cruise ship industry is environmentally benign. Yeah, no, I, I I wouldn't disagree. I will say that they are probably more regulated than most other ships of a similar size because they they have requirements that they have to meet and they're they're in port all the time, so they have to meet those requirements. But um, all right, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take it to the no, I already took it to the public. So we have a, we don't need a motion in a second. We're moving on. Item 11B, authorize the executive director to negotiate and enter into an agreement for municipal advisory services. That's you. Yeah, okay. So this is associated with the uh, the dredging. Um, as, as you recall, a couple of months ago, we entered into an agreement um, to start the financial underwriting uh, for the dredging is uh, everything is still moving up, uh, forward as planned. And so um, the rough plan is that um, we will, if, if you adopt this today, then the rough plan is, is basically we're going to, uh, they're prepared to really start shopping uh, the loan package, and we will likely get uh, proposals from lending institutions. Um, and I'm just going to use rough time periods. Uh, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, Chris. Go for it. You got it. Um, I apologize. I didn't typically interrupt. No. So, what's before you is we're asking you to authorize the executive, executive director to negotiate a new consulting agreement. So what Larry was describing was we have a bond services agreement or a bond council agreement, and uh, we need a municipal advisor to go out and seek financing. So in order for us to do that, we need to have a person on board that's going to test our ability to borrow. So they would examine the offers that we would receive from the bank, do the stress test, do the evaluation of it, do a document analysis, um, somewhat similar to an attorney's opinion letter. And actually do the audit side of the borrowing. So I don't know if you were headed there. It sounded like we were talking about shopping the dollars. And so that's what we've brought before you tonight is just for you to um, consider that specific item. There's a copy of that agreement in place. We certainly can answer questions on that. And they don't do this for free. They do not do this for free. And there's a what is the associated so there is a fee Spence. schedule that's in the agreement. Um, there's a fixed fee price, and there are some additional services that we could have. Um, part of this is we want to negotiate. That's, that's why that part is in there, and make sure that we're matching this to the actual services that we need. Um, this is a requirement for us to go out and, and do this sort of lending. It's not an optional item. Um, we have looked, as Larry shared earlier, to other advisors, and there is a significant value with this particular advisor and a very high qualification that would allow us um, to um, uh, seek value by using their services. The general contract is in here. Exhibit B is the compensation of services, and it talks specifically. So the flat fee we're paying, I believe, is $12,500. And uh, there are some additional fees and reimbursables, but they put a not to exceed value in there in this particular example. So, and that would be on, on approximately how much money that we're looking to borrow? We don't know what the amount we're looking to borrow is yet. We are going to have the group qualify as, again, that's a whole separate contract to this, but just to clarify that we're um, having them qualify our borrowing ability based on our ability to service debt. And we're probably in the range of two to four million dollars is a very broad estimate at this point in time. The flat fee is not based upon that, it's based upon the services that are being provided to us. And then there's uh, some additional fees, which would be on an hourly basis, and that's for um, specific consulting experience or questions outside of the flat fee agreement. I so move. And so can I just say just one thing with that, that or motion and second, just so we're clear. Is the, and thank you, is what, so the kind of the plan is with, you know, once we hire the people that are going to do exactly what Chris said is then we're eventually going to go out and get these, these uh, proposals. 
And then that's going to be sometime approximately in April. And so then we'll know what these numbers are going to be. And so in the meantime, then uh, we have to, we have all the permits to dredge, but uh, where we're kind of at right, right now is we need to do some, a little bit more sampling in the, uh, in the Bay. And so that's going to occur first week, uh, pretty soon. Within the next couple of weeks, there's going to be some sampling that we're going to do in the Marina to get the authorization to go to hoods, uh, take the material to hoods. Right. And so then um, we're uh, going to be meeting with the dredge subcommittee uh, because internally we've been meeting and coordinating and planning this thing out. And really where we're getting down to is matching up with the dollar amount. What is our ability to borrow and what are we going to do with the amount of material and the prioritization of the dredge areas that we need to do. And this is one of those things where we're going to have to get the fishermen and the liveaboards and these other people together uh, because most likely we're not going to have enough money to dredge the entire marina. And so we're going to have to prioritize these areas. And so in the next couple of months, this, this is all part of this major process that we've been laying out about how are we going to dredge uh, the marina. And so the the this is a major step, one of the major step forwards in this overarching process. Um, and so we're anticipating that ultimately we're going to go out to bid and in probably around the May time period. And then our dredge window is July 15th to October 15th. And we're all gearing up for that dredge cycle. So this is a major step towards that process. I uh, really want to make it very, very clear. This is a problem. Myself in the last two weeks, probably grounded six times. Other people that don't know the marina like I do and whatever else, some out of town boats have been grounding and getting stuck. It's dangerous. When people get stuck in the mud, they no longer have steerage. And if you use power to try to rectify it, you can cause property damage. It, it, could, get, it could really be bad. Uh, we gotta get this done. Whatever it takes, we, got, we can't wait another year. Right now, I cannot get into my slip on a positive tide. It used to be minus one foot. No. Now, if it's an even tide or lower, I cannot get in my slip. It's, and I know everyone's having the same problem. So we got to find a way. Mud never stops coming out of fresh water. Came down the hill, 97. It's going through that slough like a snake eating lunch and kind of parks out here. Um, the, I think it's laudatory that, the, that our commission is once again trying to take the bull by the horns here. Extremely expensive, unnecessarily so. We're going to take this mud to the hoods, but it's what we got a permit for, and the permit's open, so we go this way. But it costs a ton of money. And there's alternative technologies that have no potential for entraining long fin smelt, but we can't even entertain discussions with Cal Fishing Game about it. So um, kudos, Larry, for pushing it forward like a train for us to do something about the dredging. Um, and I'm hoping, I, I, I guess I don't understand the mud dynamics fully because the Army Corps came into the channel here in the last couple of years and dredged between us and Eureka, right? The interior channel it should have played in our benefit but the mud just must be a little too consolidated for that to kind of equilibrate because when they dig a hole out there you know if the mud were like silk then it would redistribute but it must be consolidated past that point to where we're not getting the benefits that i thought we might just from the army corps getting back in the interior channel we did get the benefit we just it doesn't move like that like you think like you want it to it's not it's not not as, sand well, it's not as mobile as it is after, especially after it's saddled. Yeah, no, it's it's consolidated. But so Chris is, is right, is that this is a, a specific contract. Last and then on the larger issue of the Army Corps is, is that we have a meeting with the Army Corps tomorrow. Um, and it's all about really the backlog of there's a million cubic yards of backlog in just the Eureka channel, a million cubic yards oh, of still, material so we got in there, but that's yeah. still there. A million cubic yards. 
there's four, they estimate 4 million cubic yards of material that to get the, the channel to full operational depth. That's what the Army Corps of Engineers estimates. And so the meeting that we're having with the Army Corps is to look at what it would take the Corps to basically get all of those areas down to operational depths, plus looking at the dredging of all of the marinas and the other things and the new heavy lift terminal dredging and the any other dredging that we think that we need to do. And then looking at hoods capacity, st really starting this dialogue, looking at hoods capacity, looking and seeing if we can encourage the core to do near shore disposal, where take the sand, turn the corner, go along the beach. So the sand goes up on the, on the, the beach to replenish the dunes, um, really starting to have this dialogue with the, the with this, and so it's all part of these, all of these systems that we have to work on to get us up to full port capacity, um, and the inner well, million cubic yards is just sitting right there. It's just like what Pat is, is saying, uh, and when they get that down to twenty six feet authorized depth, and this is fourteen foot authorized depth, you know, it's a slow process, but that's the way the system should be designed. Okay, I'm going to take it. Are you guys all done? So we I'm going to take it to the public. Just to clarify, we had a motion to approve the Correct. Thank you. Anybody in the audience care to comment on this? Please, Kevin. 45 years I've been here fishing, not specifically out of Eureka, but 45 years in Eureka. Um, they used to have a dump site that was barely outside the bar on the south side. Um, through what process, I don't know, they, they abandoned that finally. That probably killed 15 or 20 people that I know, that particular site. I have some real bad news for you. The new site is, is going to start killing people again. Um, the surfers love it because they're on the north side and they get the benefit, but Believe it or not, when you start building a mountain out there, even though you're out in 20 fathoms, it has a, a adverse effect on, on wave technology. And this bar is shallow, close, but those waves are coming in from the west and the, and the north, and they're, they're, it's getting severe. I've, I've never seen the bar in the condition it's in now, ever. It's unreadable. And that could be because we didn't start in December and we haven't had enough time to, you know, to, to be on it, but it's very unreadable. Um, you know, I'm, it, it's, nobody's doing it on purpose, but that mountain they're building out there is huge. And I don't know if the Army Corps is capable of addressing that or not, but it's something that you might consider, you know, how many millions of cubic yards we want to add to that. It's a large dump site, but the dynamics of, of the wave conditioning out there is it, it's it's pretty sad. Um, it's not it's not good news for the harbor, but uh, I I would I would suggest you know talking to the core about it if they could actually start building a mountain south the same mountain that they got there and let that one dissolve into mother nature eventually i don't know if it will or not the the one that was right outside the south jetty did but that was closer in um would be would it be a good suggestion i you know eventually 10 15 years of dredging is going to do the same thing but if they keep dumping it on that same site it doesn't do the bar any good at all i don't know about mud collection and all that stuff but the wave is a real problem just my experience. Thanks, sir. Anybody else in the audience care to comment on on the municipal services advisory? Seeing then, I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. All right, Rob. Receive report providing status update of contracts budgets associated with the district offshore wind heavy lift terminal project. All right, hold on to your seats. <laughs> so in March of 22, 
board authorized a $10.45 million grant um, with the California Energy Commission. We received that grant and on the same, at the same meeting, approved a contract with Moffitt Nickel for three and a half million dollars. The Moffitt Nickel contract is structured to be divided into task orders or subdivisions of that contract. And the board authorized task order number one during that meeting. And then also in that action, authorized the executive director to approve additional task orders within that total contracted amount. Task order one was for 1.2 million. Charge to date is nearly that amount with about 8,000 remaining. And nearly all the deliverables of task order one have been delivered with a couple coming in the next 30, 45 days. Task order two, is likely to be in the forty to hundred thousand dollar range. It's kind of an interim step to accomplish a number of things that need to be done immediately. Uh, I forecast that'll be approved in the coming two weeks. Uh, and the focus is really just proceeding with the contract, focusing on the preliminary project description and preparing the CEQA notice of preparation, which is the official beginning of the CEQA process. Task order number three is the remainder of the contract budget, which is the total amount minus task order one minus task order two. And I think that we'll probably be having that activated in March. That's for the full 30% design CEQA and permitting. Moffitt Nickel. Not 30% CEQA, 100% CEQA. 100% of CEQA. Okay, that's just- 100% of permitting, 30% design. Okay. Contract amendments are for things that are not scoped or budgeted in the current contract, but you know, add-ons that are necessary to complete the overall project. So an example is the environmental documents for eelgrass mitigation. We're working on a different funding stream for that and likely to come to you for a contract amendment for the eelgrass in the coming meetings, you know, two or three meetings from now. The CEC contract, Total awards 10.45 million. Here are all the tasks as uh, per our agreement with the uh, California Energy Commission. So project work plan is really project management and you know kind of managing all of this. Tasks one and two are already complete. That was the development of the RFP and something else I don't remember, but we got no money for that, but it was something they expected us to do before they would issue us any funds. Then developing the project concept and refining that, master project description and preliminary engineering, special studies and site surveys, CEQA and NEPA permits. And then the bulk of the money here is final engineering design and implementation of the road project and eelgrass mitigation. So construction money for the road and eelgrass mitigation. It's our expectation that we'll be able to use this as a match for grants for other grants and it's the, the CEC's expectation as well and any money that we don't spend up to the point that we apply for a grant may also potentially be used as a match so we're trying to maximize the amount of funds that we use for a match right now we only have authorization for tasks three through well, one through eight one and two are done Task nine is coming into the future. And this money is really reimbursements. So we get reimbursed for district staff time and we get reimbursed for consultants. Currently, that's entirely Moffitt Nickel and all of their sub consultants, but other consultants we have, we can get approval to get reimbursed. And that's the case for every one of these tasks. All of them are reimbursable for both district staff time and consultants. And the point at which we activate this latter task depends on how fast we do these early tasks. So this is 22, 23, and 24 for tasks one through, one through eight. And task nine, the timing of that is to be determined. Could be as early as later this year, but um, more likely earliest in 2024. One last thing. Unless you want to, it looks like you have a question, Commissioner Dale. No, I, 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 you know how uh, you guys, you planners, like those nice timeline diagrams with all the yep. um, 
you don't have one of those. You can't tell us where we're at on that, or can you? I well, so you're not prepared tonight, but maybe maybe he wants a Gantt yeah. chart. Yep, <laughs> a Gantt chart. Yes, I've got a, I've got a Gantt chart so complex you couldn't see the words I, if I, I flashed it up on the screen. Right. Um, mid 2024 for the permits in CEQA. Is that the answer you're looking for? Well, is that what we planned? Yes. A little bit later, we were shooting for March. It looks like it'll be a little bit later. It feels like it feels like you guys are on schedule, pretty much. I mean, I, I don't. So far, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm being <laughs> yeah. There you go. Okay, go ahead. Until we send it out to referrals. <laughs> yeah. Good summary. Thank you, Rob. Well, there's a little bit more. So phasing is important to talk about here. So this color in here, this peachy color, which is also up in here, we're calling phase zero. So it's the soft cost, which is the permitting and design as well as eelgrass mitigation, terrestrial mitigation, and the north road and the south road. So that's the stuff that really has to happen before the big site development can occur. Phase one is the green stuff. It's the north part of the site. Uh, phase 1A is the wharf. Phase 1B is the yard or the, the uplands, the tarmac. Phase two is an, an add-on wharf. And then phase three, tentative future phase, uh, wharf and more upland yard. And here's the overall uh, preliminary order of magnitude estimate of probable costs. So this is not a cost estimate, it's an, an estimate of probable costs. I'll just start at the bottom line, $800 million. Looks like a sale price, <laughs> $798. So start, out of, start out at 450 <laughs> This is like, this is like, yeah. Okay, go ahead. Uh, that's it. I mean, I can go over the individual details if you want, but uh, it's, it's a big price tag there. But that's total build out? Everything. Talking? That's total build out. So for 2023, we plan on finishing the field work, refining the project strategy, stakeholder and public engagement, initiating CEQA. Uh, initiating the permits, trying to figure out NEPA. We need a lead agency. It definitely needs to happen in 2023. Uh, continuing with the preliminary design, acquiring construction funding. And the general schedule and opportunities for involvements, the CEQA NOP, March, early April, will be the official beginning of CEQA and when public engagement will really begin. There'll be stakeholder and good engagement throughout 23 and early 24, a lot of regulatory agency meetings in that time, um, public meetings, and we shoot to complete CEQA NEPA permits in 2024. Just a status report on the project overall. Now I'll say good job. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Rob. Yep. Right. So uh, just, uh, I think it goes without saying that one of the things that we, when the board issued the, the approved the contract, you know, commissioner, uh, President Dale and the board, you know, said about, you know, all of the compliance and staying on track administratively and all of these things and how critical it is when you get, uh, when you start to get grant funds at the scale that we're talking about here and at the scale of the project that we're going to be getting, um, it's really it's it's really critical that, you know, that we, Rob and our staff, that we stay on the fine and the the the, the straight and narrow comfort to the board is that because it is un equivocally one of the most important things that we do as the staff is really keeping the books in order keeping everything together uh, because that's the only way that we're going to continue to get this project is if we have our administrative house uh, in in order and it really is one of the the, the cornerstone of when you do a, a a major public infrastructure project like this because this is this is a lot of money and then just lastly I think what you saw a couple of a uh, couple of meetings ago. We had the Smoke Peninsula Community Service District, you know, came to us and said, you know, look, you guys are doing these big projects. You know, we we, we need we're hurting. We need some some resources. And last night we met with Humble Bay Municipal Water District, and they're saying, you know, look, our water line it needs you know a good ten million dollars to to do about five miles of of upgrade of the water line. 
And, you know, the, the core hub and other groups are coming to us and the Peninsula community, uh, Collaborative is going to come to us and say, we need all of these things as, and the fishermen uh, are going to uh, need things as well. And so it's the reason why these price tags are going up. And so we have to keep these lists and keep all of these things together and keep track of all this thing. Uh, but the reality is we're talking about right now an $800 million project. And we're not done. And we're not Collect, even done. Collecting things that we're, need to be we're, added. We're, we're unequivocally uh, not even getting started yet. And so... Um, we have a $790 million shortfall. <laughs> That's not bad. <laughs> see if your, see if your <laughs> municipal advisors can fix that. <laughs> can we pull out some credit cards here? And we can pull? Pass the hat. <laughs> yes. But so, uh, so speaking of which, since you brought that up, where do you anticipate that seven hundred and ninety million dollars? coming from? We're applying for a federal port infrastructure development program grants. Um, it was, it's due in late April. Uh, we've been unsuccessful in two of those in the past, but had a really good meeting with the grant agency, MARAD, a couple of weeks ago, and feel like we have a really good understanding of why we didn't get it and what we need to do to win. So I feel very confident that we're going to get it this year. Which is for? Which is for it'll how be, much? Oh, 40 million. Okay. Uh, and it'll be likely applied to phase 1B. If they're on the map. Um, we're working with Caltrans on funding for phase 0A. So it's going to be a, a, what Crowley likes to call a funding stack. So we're working on a complex funding stack, and Crowley's going to have a big role in figuring out where that money comes from. I mean, a, a substantial portion of it's going to be from these private fund developers as well. Mm -hmm. At least, I guess that was a question. I didn't phrase it. In. <laughs> it's, a, it's a logical assumption. No, but I mean, what's they need it, and they have the money, and so that's that's definitely. And without the architecture of the permits and these these core grants to set up the foundation, then you can't leverage that. And uh, but that's that's forthcoming. I mean, if these guys want to get in the game, it takes quite a bit of skin. All just gets passed to your electric bill. So that, keep that in mind. Um, that was awesome. Thank you. Any other any other comments from the board? Must be late. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody in the audience like to comment um, on? Um, our status update. Um, Carla again from Manila, being a Peninsula resident. Um, Are you still on the board? No, but um, the residents that I speak to, we all have a lot of concerns about traffic. And I know the Harbor District may not have anything to do with this, but when it comes to just putting the whole package together with all these different contractors, we all kind of wonder what's going to happen when there are all these construction workers, all these trucks coming and going on our little highway 255, right down the middle of our community, going 60, 55, 60 miles an hour, making more potholes and, you know, on and on. It's just very unsafe already as it is for us to try and cross the divide, the great divide to get to the beach or whatnot. So we all are just kind of wondering how we're going to be part of the process of, that's going to be going on for the next couple of years and how we how do we get our voices heard? We've you know, we've talked to some agencies that are interested in having us voice our concerns and then communicating those to the contractors. But we also want our our voices to be heard locally with the Harbor District, with Caltrans, with the county. Mm -hmm. And um, so just, I know it's early in the process, but Manila is unique in on the peninsula. The peninsula is communicating with each other and it's all important to, you know, I know that it, Samoa will be greatly impacted as well, but we're the only community that just is divided right down the middle by the highway where all this traffic is gonna be going, so. You need a stop sign or 
something, you know, at least yeah, right. to reduce that, that, the, that would, yeah. That would be, you know, kind of polarizing, but it seems Stop like light, perhaps. That, would, that would basically slow the, the, the traffic and then have a safe route across there. And um, people might be dissuaded from just using 255 versus the 101 corridor, because I think people, some people use that, the Samoa Peninsula, because they want to drive faster. Mm -hmm. You know, and so that yeah, could be if, part of mitigation. And I don't know how we articulate with Caltrans on things like that, but um, well, it sounds like there's an, I mean, and there is, there's an entire process that's going to be occurring with CEQA, NEPRA, and public engagement. And it's great, you know, that you're bringing these things up now, but there will be and opportunities for bringing these things up into the public record, and that'll be written into regulations and mitigations. and it is going to be impact, you know, there's no, yeah. you know, it'd be wrong for us to sit here and lie to you and say mm -hmm. there's not going to be impact. And so being able to address some of these things. And, we did have a meeting with Crowley things. already in uh, at the Nature Center, and he was very dismissive of any traffic concerns. He said, they're all coming in through the port. They're all going to be on the water. That's that was it. What you know, but who's gonna jet skis? Yeah, <laughs> who's gonna? I mean, not the construction workers and not the all the you know materials to build these facilities. So, so we aren't we have been scoping that, yet, but scoping starting soon from what the timeline he just said. So that's what that, they're obligated to listen to everybody and then put it in a big report and see what they're going to do about it. Okay. I and there is, there is the, want to the, get our voices heard the here. The new too. special district that is created by the county that, and I can never remember the name of it. Peninsula, Small Peninsula Community Service District. No, not the, the, the I, EIF. The I, or the EFIB. EFIB. Infrastructure Finance District. Yes. And that, that'll, that'll, that's a good place to take some of that public comment too, right? Um, so, Okay. These guys can put you in contact with that organization. So I've been told, and I don't know if this is true, and I guess we'll find out as the process goes, but I've been told that there's going to be less traffic than there was when all the mills were working out there. There's going to be less people working out there than when the mills were all out there. I don't know if that's true or not. Yeah. And that may be one of those dismissive yeah. sort of um, comments, but yeah, I mean, I think part of the plan that you see here too, but it's again, we don't have any real plans, these are conceptual plans. So, so is that there is that north entrance road that will be capturing the bulk of the traffic, but it's still going to be some of us will be coming through Manila, yeah. So, I, again, I think these, these are the opportunities to bring these things up. Again. Apologize if you know, if anyone was dismissive because I think you know these are things that we all want to listen to. We want our contractors to listen to. We want developers to listen. Yeah, to. well, we'll we'll be keeping up with all of the meetings. I just thought I wanted to get the voice heard here at with the Harbor District. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Thanks for participating. Any other anybody else like to comment on this item? Rob, thanks. We don't have a motion. We don't need a motion on that. Thanks for that. That was awesome. Thanks for keeping us up, up to speed. Um, I'm moving on to 12D. Consider adopting resolution 2023-03, a resolution designating business matters, appointment, and authorization for the Humboldt Bay Harbor Recreation Conservation District for Is calendar year 23. Is there a calendar? So move. Second. Take a vote on our calendar. Do we need to take I want to just highlight a couple of things here, if I could, yeah. is that um, so there's there's on page on page 58 is uh, item number 10, because what this within this, this is kind of our every year we do this uh, resolution adopting business matters. But I wanted to just point out a couple of changes that we're adding this year that are new. And so in, in item 10, 10 B. We're, we're clarifying for basically the, the grants. And so we added new 10B and C and basically to say that uh, the executive director is authorized to submit and commit up to $5,000 of matching funds 
because that's that's up to what my spending limit is uh, so that we're authorized these relatively small grants i'm authorized to go ahead and do that as long as it's budgeted and within those but any grants that are over five thousand dollars of committing those matching funds then we would come back to the board to do that that's kind of a clarification that we wanted to do because sometimes we talk about that at staff level can do we have to go to the board do we not and then the second thing i wanted to point out was in item number uh, 12 and that is is to say that for for leases that we're authorized to to execute leases as long as they're at the rates that are in the fee schedule right and then with and then item number b because when you adopt the fee schedule you adopt uh, some lease rates that are included those such as woodley island marina and all these other things just to clarify that and then in the item b there is uh, sometimes at, in particular, at Redwood Marine Terminals 1 and 2, that there's some negotiations that we have to do with those leases because there's some really unique spaces. So what it says is that uh, of lease agreements with that are less than $40,000 of annual income um, at Redwood Marine Terminal 1 and 2 and $20,000 of annual income uh, for at other district uh, properties, such as field landing, boat yard, and other things. Again, these relatively small contracts uh, that I would be authorized to then negotiate just to sort of clarify those things. And so I wanted to point those things out because those are those are new items. Thank you, Larry. All right. I have a motion in a second, right? And this is a resolution. Uh, any anybody from the audience like to comment? Going once, go on twice. It's your last chance. <laughs> um, so it's a resolution, so we need a roll call. Commissioner Newman? Yes. Commissioner Coleman? Yep. Commissioner Higgins? Yeah. And President Dale? Yes. Please, thank you. Mm -hmm. So we are at the end of our evening, I believe. I see that the budget is a future agenda item. Does that mean we're going to be having some budget subcommittee meetings? Soon? We will. We're having yeah. subcommittees, man. Oh, future agenda items. Any any future agenda <laughs> items you guys would like? Um, well, I mean, we, we make them up as we go, but if you guys have some that you uh, want to have to see. Um, I, I wonder if it's, if it's, uh, if it's worthwhile to to give us an update on where we're at with uh, the intake permitting, or we just is it has it changed at all since the last time we got a report? I mean, I, I feel like I've I ask you about it all the time, but I don't know if the rest of yeah, I think we're going to get the draft. I mean, the water board committed uh, to giving us the the draft uh, NPDS permits and the intake permits, I think tomorrow, wasn't it? Or sometime in the next couple of days, we're gonna be getting the draft uh, internally for us not released yet to the public. Um, and so, yeah, we're, we're getting ready to see those uh, those documents and so we can give you an update. Okay, I'd like to see that. And then uh, do we do we have a final report from the, the Longfin Smelt guys from the eDNA work, the sampling has been done? What you're gonna, what's going to come to you is in your March, what we're anticipating in your March meeting is going to be the Harbor District permit for the intake. And so, yes, you will be uh, getting, we'll be asking you to approve the intake permit. And so you will be evaluating it yeah. in detail at your March uh, board meeting. Anything else? So your you wish know, is, uh, parking, yes. issue. parking issue. That should probably be on the agenda. Mm -hmm. um, if Hopefully we can solve it before then when you have your, your committee meeting. Yeah. Um, He's probably not busy right now anyways, but, right? Are you busy right now? It's the middle of the night. Selling, selling <laughs> crab. Oh yeah. No, yeah. You're right. you pay, are you paying more than two bucks a pound for crab? He's sketching. I am. I pay my crew on $3. Which, what? You need another crewman? <laughs> sound, sound great, but he got a two percent raise the very first day. All right, he likes to show up late, go yeah. home early. He really doesn't like to do he's much. Not old enough, my is sixty. Yeah, okay, uh, he's getting there. He's sixty. Yeah. All right, so I we are done. I would say that the that 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 parking issue is something that probably doesn't need board involvement, like Scott would kind of Yeah, yeah. Scott can figure it out. Make the We're done. There. Hey, I appreciate the time you've given me. <laughs>